What's going on guys? Today we are looking at another mini PC and when I say mini PC, man do I absolutely mean it. Sometimes these photos are a little bit misleading. I think this is probably going to be one of those instances because that would be like this big. I don't think it's quite that small, but it is going to be, I mean you can tell by the ethernet ports and so forth on the back that this thing is going to be pretty doggone small. This thing is from Ace Magician. It is a 12th gen N100 processor, 16 gigs of RAM. It's an M.2 SSD, which is going to definitely require some testing. It's got Wi-Fi, it's got Ethernet. $169 is the current price. On paper, this thing seems like it should be pretty decent. I have had it delivered in this very not descriptive box. So first, we're going to unbox this thing, take a close look at it, and go from there. All right, so like I said, this is in a very small box that really does not have any information on it at all. So we're just going to skip that part and open this thing up. Mini PC user manual. I doubt that this is going to be super useful either. We do have some uh, foam on top. And you know what, guys? Maybe that photo wasn't all that unrealistic. My lord, this thing looks like it's, <laughs> it's absolutely diminutive. Look at this thing. I cannot believe... How small this thing is. Mac Mini, eat your heart out. You're not mini at all. You're actually gigantic. And they've got the power button on the top and the front, which is where that should be. Otherwise, in the box, we have these screws, we have the power supply, and we have an HDMI cable. And I'm guessing that those screws are so that you can basically mount this thing to the back of a monitor because it's so small. That would be very easy for you to do. Looks like we have three USB-A ports. We do have our power supply, which is going to be that barrel plug. Some uh, Ethernet ports here. These are fans, audio output, like a headphone jack, and then three HDMI ports on the back. So this thing is, I guess, presumably supposed to be around three monitors, which is crazy to use this something this small as, as a workhorse in that way, powering three different monitors. So I removed the four screws from the bottom to see how easy this thing would be to disassemble and potentially upgrade. And it looks like the answer is not particularly easy. You may be able to get into this thing further, but I'm not going to push my luck any more than that. You can see the fan here, some heat pipes up inside. I'm Yeah, like I said, I'm not going to push my luck. I'm just going to put this thing back together and we'll get testing. And very strangely, interestingly, like the last... A uh, mini PC that I reviewed from Camera. I think that's how that was supposed to be pronounced. It did not ask me to sign into my Microsoft account. It did a local account only. I set a password and then just my name and off we went. So this is another one of these things you can have to watch out for. Sometimes they've tweaked Windows in some way that we're going to have to dig into and see exactly what we can tell about how they've tweaked Windows. Let's jump ahead, though, until this is done and we'll be at our desktop. All right, so we have arrived on our desktop. I would imagine these are all probably like web apps that are going to be loading in here in just a moment. Let me look and see if I see anything that's installed that should not be here. I have seen Chrome be pre-installed. I do not see that. This looks pretty bare bones, so we may be okay. Let's pull up our task manager. Let's see if we see anything running that also looks weird. I don't see anything that looks strange. So I think that we're going to be okay to just run this as is. Obviously, I'm going to need to clean things up a little bit, install my browser of choice, but I think we're okay. I don't think we're going to be in a position where we were with the camera YPC where I ended up just reflashing windows all together. I should be able to jump into settings, though, and sign into my Microsoft account. All right, so I took some time to get things set up, get everything updated, and install a few things. Uh, of course, I was able to sign into my Microsoft account, no problem. So everything is running just fine. Let's start by talking about that M.2 drive that it says that it has. I ran this benchmark, uh, Crystal Mark is a way to test your drive's speed. And without going too deep into this, because it really doesn't deserve to go too deep into this, these scores are not very good at all. For a normal M.2 drive, you might expect to see something that is in the realm of four, five, six times faster than this. So I would say that as you use this device, you may see some slowdowns here and there. I think I'm actually going to sleep. You might see some slowdowns here and there, and that's going to be because this drive is just not very fast. 
Let's see what some normal day-to-day -day stuff looks like, though. We're going to fire up our Chrome browser, and it's going straight to YouTube. And you can see that, again, you know, this is not like a blazingly fast computer, but it did an okay job there. Let's fire up a video on my own channel so that you can kind of see how that works. Seems relatively, you know, decent to me. We're going to crank this thing up to 4K. 2160p granted you're not going to necessarily see any kind of quality improvement there but what you will be able to see is that it can handle that just fine it's going to be able to render 4k video in something like youtube or netflix whatever it might be it's going to handle all that stuff with with relative ease you just may see a little bit of a slower experience than you would expect when you're jumping from site to site. Or maybe it's about what you would expect. It's just not what you would expect to see out of like, you know, what I'm used to with my computer or like a decent laptop. But for a mini PC like this, it's right there in the realm of, of what is normal. And once it does start to build up some cash for some websites, that is definitely going to speed things up. You can see scrolling around, not seeing a lot of like lag or slowdown. We'll go ahead and fire up this website here. This should take us to Android Authority. Yeah, I mean, that's fine for browsing the web, for the light kind of things that you're going to be doing with a mini PC. I think that it is pretty sufficient. We have Rocket League running here, and I have everything pretty much turned down as low as it will go. By the way, keep in mind, I'm playing this through a capture card, so there is a delay with everything I do. So don't take my my skill level to be <laughs> what you are seeing here. Uh, very hard to play this way. But uh, we are running around 30 FPS a lot of the time. Sometimes it does drop into the 20s, but this, I would say, is just barely in that playable realm. I mean, if you were if you were playing this through, you know, normal TV, not a capture card, so there's no delay, this is going to be a reasonable experience. And of course, we could lower the resolution of the game as well and see if we can squeeze out any more performance that way because we are running at 1080p. So let's, you know, realistically, let's drop this thing down to something like 720p and see what that gets us. Obviously, it looks significantly worse now, but we are actually getting up into the 50 FPS range, getting close to 60 FPS. So at that point, you may actually, oh, well, yeah, that delay really got me. You may be able to go into these settings once again and do some things like maybe let's turn some anti-aliasing back on. If you're targeting 30 FPS as your goal, you might be able to turn some of that stuff back up and still end up with a relatively playable game. Let's take a look at one more game. This is a game called Valheim that I have been playing uh, with my wife and some friends for the last little bit. And as you can see here, I've had to turn my settings down pretty darn far. In fact, I'll just show you. I've basically turned them down all the way, almost just logged out on accident. Uh, yeah, so we're doing 720p and we've turned everything down. Even the render scale is actually turned down a little bit. And at that point, you could say that it's maybe almost playable. I don't think I would, I would want to play it in this particular state. But, you know, maybe you could, maybe you could get a little bit of work done at this point. So, yeah, definitely this thing is not a gaming machine by any stretch of the imagination, but it is always fun to kind of check and see what kind of gaming something this small is actually capable of doing. If you're willing to play something that is sort of a smaller scale type game, older games, emulators, Stardew Valley type stuff, you're probably going to be okay there. Something else that I think is very important when it comes to devices like this, what kind of networking speed can you expect? So we're going to use speedtest.net. I am on a fiber connection. It is a one gig connection. So, and it's also, I should mention, it's also about five feet away from my router. So I would hope to see a decent speed and we're getting around 240 down. So we're losing about three quarters of our speed over Wi-Fi. This is my Pixel 9 Pro Fold and I'm getting about 386, 390, even close to 400 down. So closer to half of our speed there over Wi-Fi, same distance, the computer's literally right here next to me. So definitely not the best Wi-Fi experience I've seen. Luckily, if you're able to just run an Ethernet cable to this device, you are going to get much closer to your full speed. You can see I was at 867 down and then 948 up. Again, this is a one gig connection, so I'd say that's close enough for me.
So this might be like the ugliest possible setup because I just wanted to throw this together and see if this actually worked. But you can see that this device is currently driving three different displays over three different HDMI cables. And it's actually handling this far better than I expected. I am not seeing any significant slowdown at all. This is hard to do with one hand on a trackpad over there. But yeah, I'm not seeing any significant slowdown at all. The thing is running pretty much normal. We have a video running here. We have the Microsoft Store getting set up over there. We have threads running on the other screen. And it's handling it fine. I think to me, the most obvious way to use something like this, or maybe I would say the most compelling use case for me, is in conjunction with something like my Anchor Nebula projector, using it as a media center with your web browser. You can get to any media source you want. This is my Sling TV setup, and it works really, really well. Handles this stuff beautifully. And the thing is so tiny, you could easily stash this thing away in any number of different ways. And if you want to do some gaming on this thing, Rather than just doing it directly on this device, you know, take advantage of something like Steam's in-home streaming, and that actually works pretty well. Of course, the caveats there are that you're going to need a good, like, primary gaming computer and a pretty decent network connection, of which I have both. But it is an option, and it actually works pretty well. I'll try to show you the latency by hitting this jump button at the same time as you can see me jumping so there's definitely some latency, but I think I could probably adjust to that and play some games. Maybe not like competitive shooters, but something like Valheim. Yeah, absolutely. I did notice though, when I tried to mount this thing in my living room to just keep it off the floor, that the mounting bracket doesn't line up correctly. Maybe they just shipped the wrong one, but they're too far apart. I can get one in, but then the other one, probably hard to see that, but it's nowhere near correct. So. It's still off the floor, but not exactly how I wanted it to be. One thing I just noticed was that I had the old Windows 10 volume UI, and that got me kind of wondering what version of Windows this was actually running. And so I jumped into the settings, and I'm running 21H2. That is actually very, very old. And for whatever reason, I'm just not finding an update. So this may be something that you have to actually manually update, maybe making a little update, a flash drive and plugging it in. Not a huge deal. I'll drop a link into the description about uh, you know where you would go to do that, but that is something to probably consider. All right, so what's the verdict on this thing? I actually have used it for the last couple of days in the configuration you just saw hooked up to my projector. In fact, earlier today, I used it with Sling TV and my Air TV set up to watch my Tennessee Titans lose once again to the Los Angeles Chargers, and it handled all of that just fine. I also have this little keyboard controller thing that uses a USB dongle. That's hooked up to it, and that is working really well. So as sort of an entertainment center type thing, streaming media, whether it's from your primary computer and it is a game or it's media, or streaming stuff over Hulu, Netflix, Sling TV, whatever it might be, that stuff is going to work just fine. Browsing the web, basic things, email, word, text, document type things, that's all going to work just fine. And that's the stuff you got to keep in mind. For $169, if you know what you're getting and that matches up with your use case and you want something that's really small, really, really low power consumption, it can be hidden out of the way, this is going to work quite well. And yeah, you can even do things like powering three different monitors. So again, it's going to come out of your use case. You know, if you're just, most of your time is spent inside your web browser and doing things like that with 16 gigs of RAM, I think it's going to be fairly capable. Just don't expect to be processing video, gaming, things like that. That kind of stuff, not going to work super, super well. I do want to say a big thanks to Ace Magic for sending this PC over for me to review. As with all of my reviews, no money has exchanged hands for the production of this video, and they are seeing my review at the exact same time as you are. There will be an affiliate link in the description down below. If you click that link and you make a purchase, it will help support the channel by giving me some commission off of that sale. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.